Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Common Sense Guys channel. How are you all doing today? I'm guessing you've had a look at the actual title of this video and you're probably wondering what's going on and why I'm doing a video like this. Now, before we actually get into this, I actually want to put into preface so people actually understand where I'm actually coming from in total on this. I've actually done two videos myself explaining why I dislike the BBC. I've also done the two videos explaining why the licensing fee is absolutely moronic, idiotic, and I actually put up a petition as well and helped sign a petition and put forward a petition around about a year and a half ago. So my position on that hasn't changed. I still think that the license fee for the BBC is vastly misused, let me put it that way, so I don't get <laughs> demonetized or deplatformed because of talking bad about the big, good, good BBC and impartial BBC. But I do want to put that to that side. I want to describe and talk about and try to elucidate should we say, about this tweet. Because this tweet seems to have caused so much, so much problems with people on the right side, so to speak, of politics, that are talking about race and everything else like that, and trying to talk about the idea of equality and everything else like that. And I'm, I'm with them on most parts of their political ideology, and I, I'm actually with them in mostly i would say entirely but i'm against them on this so i can't say that so let me set up the actual situation that's going on but don't forget to like don't forget to share don't forget to subscribe hit that notification bell and all that sort of good stuff let's get into the video and let's tackle this properly shall we Right then, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I'd like to take just a couple of seconds to be able to go back through what I just said. So, we're starting from this tweet again. And this tweet says, While Dwayne Fields found solace in the landscapes of the UK and beyond, many in black, Asian and minority ethnic groups see the countryside as being a white environment. Now, a lot of people have gone out of their way to try and, in my opinion, mischaracterize this as something that seems to be attacking whiteness or white people in general. And I didn't see it from the tweet myself. I didn't see it. I didn't see how white environment encapsulated the idea of whiteness or attacking whiteness in general or just white people in general. Because it seems to me that it's literally saying that a lot of minority ethnic groups don't seem to find that the background or the countryside itself is something in which that they feel comfortable in. Now, even by when I say that, some people are going to go out of their way to try and say, well, that's because they feel that white people are this and that people are that and so on and so forth. And I agree with you. But that is probably what they think. But notice how that's been structured. Notice how that is how they think. Not how it is, but how they think. And that's where we are at the minute. Where we're now taking how a group think of a certain environment as the countryside is more of a white thing to do. Going walking, rambling and so on and so forth is more of a white thing to do and yet I don't want to use the word that comes with the left but it really does feel like it's this bad but it really does feel like white fragility and I really don't want to use that word but it really does feel that people are so fragile that they can't even have the conversation about trying to encourage more BAME communities more people in the BAME communities into the countryside and to enjoy the countryside. Somehow they feel that they need to defend the idea of the countryside isn't a white environment or something for them to be able to not even have the conversation. 
Like, again, the tweet is literally talking about black and Asian and minority ethnic groups and how they see the countryside. That doesn't imply that's how the countryside is. But yet so many people are now going down the road of saying that it is. Just one of the tweets in itself is from Martin Dulberry, or Dunberry, which says, This is absurd. To imply that the countryside, a passive, welcoming phenomenon, is somehow racist is ridiculous. Worst license payers are funding this diversity propaganda. Now, again, in most cases, I would actually agree that the BBC is a propaganda machine that is causing division. But I don't see it in this case. I see it as more of a conversation starter. And the reason why I see this more of a conversation starter is because, guess what? I've actually watched the segment from Country File. And apart from a little bit of virtue signaling about the Black Lives Matter movement itself, which we'll get into, it doesn't really seem to be attacking the idea of whiteness. It actually seems to be attacking the ideas that are coming from the BAME community about how their perceptions are. So let's get into the actual video properly and have a look at it properly and see why this is so absurd to be so defensive about having conversations about how the BAME community may or may not have a preconception of certain areas in the countryside and wildlife and so on and so forth. And why is it so hard to have a conversation about that? Let's get into it, shall we? This was me 10 years ago. I had just become the first Black Briton to reach the North Pole. A need for adventure to leap into the great outdoors is in my blood. And even here, closer to home, the natural world has always been a source of spiritual nourishment. See, I actually agree with him that when I myself go into nature, I actually have a sense of calm come over me like i'm enjoying myself i feel like i'm supposed to be where i'm supposed to be I, I don't know it has a very interesting calming effect on on me when i go into the into nature and do a nature walk for instance i actually quite enjoy that i don't actually think that that has anything to do with racial aspects i think it has more to do with a human aspect or if you want to go even more deeper an animalistic process after all, cities are unnatural to humans. Nature is, as in says, more natural. So why shouldn't we actually encourage all races and all mixtures to go back into nature and enjoy it? Just a thought. And here in Epping Forest in Essex is where I get my daily dose of the outdoors. The woods, the birds, the sounds, even the air. It's all been a lifeline for me. While I grew up in the countryside of Jamaica, climbing trees and exploring, life changed when I came to inner city London. I was surrounded by gang culture and became the victim of both knife and gun crime. Everything changed for me when I came face to face with a man with a gun. He pulled the trigger twice, but thankfully nothing came out. It misfired both times. I needed to get out of this lifestyle and that's when I turned to nature. I generally want people to re-listen to that clip again and again and again because for somebody to come from a background where he was heavily involved in gang activity to being able to be the only black British man to be able to climb any sort of form of mountain and in essence Mount Everest, literally the tallest mountain, how can anybody say that you shouldn't invite more and more people from the inner cities into the countryside to escape that type of lifestyle to realize that there is more to life than shooting a gun or trying to get into gang activities there is nothing better for escaping city lifestyle than literally escaping the city and visiting the countryside which i think this is in essence what it's trying to advertise to people when i talk to people from the black and minority ethnic community it's clear that they don't view the UK countryside as somewhere that's for them. It's not theirs. They don't belong there. And I want to find out why. 
Now, I'm actually quite interested in this as well. I'm interested in finding out where these preconceptions actually derive from and how they arrive to that ideology, how they arrive to that conclusion that the countryside isn't for them. Is it just based on their own personal stereotyping? Is it a case of their own prejudice, their own bigotry, so to speak, that is leading them to this conclusion? Or is there a, a give and take? Is there an instance of when it used to be like that and how generations have taught their children to protect them to be, in essence, more worried or worried about going into the countryside? Is it something that's been taught to them? Or is it something that has been ingrained into them? I really am interested in finding out what actually is going on and why Bane communities are not interested or feel welcomed enough to go into these areas and instances like that. I really want to know, but I don't feel that going across and saying that the BBC are being racist about this is the correct way to start any of these conversations. As it happens, I am not the only one. Last September, an independent review of England's national parks was published by the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. They found that the countryside is seen by both black, Asian and minority ethnic groups and white people alike as being very much a white environment. Now, this seems to be where a lot of people have their contention, so to speak, where the white environment is somehow indicative or comes to the point of being controlled or in essence a a white person or people thing and it's generally not generally what they mean by white environment is a case of that's a white person thing to do as in walking rambling hiking through the woods that type of situation or you know being a naturalist or naturist is more of a white thing to do. Why, why do you want to do that type of thing? That's more of a white thing to do. Now, that's on the Bain community themselves to work out. But also as well, it's also on us to realise that when somebody says white environment, that's not necessarily an attack on white people. If you go into a Chinese area and you say, oh, it's a Chinese environment, you're not attacking the Chinese people you're describing the environment that is encompassing to what you think is going on. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not necessarily a good thing. You put those level of prescriptors onto those words. That doesn't mean that white environment is attacking white people. And for anybody to go out of their way to try and say that that's what they're trying to do here, I just don't see it. I don't see how white environment in which where you would quite honestly say that the hiking and riding and so on and so forth is more of a white thing to do. You generally see more white people doing this. So why wouldn't you name it a white environment? It's not a racist term. It's describing how people perceive those things to be done. I, I just don't see where the level of racism or the uh, attack on white people is in this instance. I just don't actually see it. I see this more of a honest conversation about trying to invite more people into the countryside. I just don't see the racism. The review also concluded that if that is true today, then the divide is only going to widen as society changes. Our countryside will end up being irrelevant to the country that actually exists. I'm a Scout Ambassador and I work with the National Trust. Both organisations are working to get more diversity into the outdoors. I do honestly think that a lot of people hear the word diversity and I think they automatically assume that there's going to be some sort of form of quota or there's going to be some sort of form of, for the Americans, affirmative action in doing something like this. Where in simple fact it could be as simple as getting programs to entice more young BAME community people into the idea of actually liking their local area, getting rid of the prejudice that some of these BAME communities may instill into their children, 
and getting rid of that and enticing them into coming into the countryside and realizing that the countryside isn't as bad as what their parents or their grandparents may have instilled into them. But yeah, people just go on to the idea that it's now a case of you say anything of those two descriptors and you're talking about attacking white people as a whole, not trying to encourage other people to get rid of their preconceptions or prejudice. No, it's attacking white people. Again, I, I just don't get it. Let me know in the comment section if you do. But what more could be done? To answer that, maybe we need to understand some of the barriers that black and minority ethnic people face when it comes to the countryside. Beth Collier is a psychotherapist who teaches people how to experience the natural world. She grew up in the countryside and believes racism is still a big part of why people of color are less present in nature today. Being black in a rural area is an isolating experience. And very often you're the first black person that people have met. And so there's that sense of being treated as an ambassador. Whatever you do is taken to be what black people do. I think this is a really interesting take. Could you imagine being the only white person in the Middle East or the only white person in Asia or any African country and feeling that sense of isolation that there isn't another person that looks like you in that type of area and how you would feel isolated and how you might feel attacked on different aspects or how you feel that you need to be an ambassador. And don't get me wrong, these are all feelings that a person has and may not necessarily be indicative to the truth or how people in that rural area actually perceive those people. I get that, I understand that. But can you imagine how you would feel in those instances and how those feelings can lead you to perceive how your life is going to be treated and how people are treating you in that instance. Now again, I don't think that that's indicative to the way that people are in rural areas, but it's an interesting concept. Shouldn't we take that on board and listen and then understand why people feel the way that they do? Do you think there's still racism in the countryside? Yes, absolutely. As a black leader in the environmental field, it's been very difficult to um, find connection and support as a professional because of uh, racist attitudes towards my presence in the space. And this uh, examples can be um, people openly saying they like the good old days when you could be racist and you didn't have to be BC and breaking into impersonations. So again, Right, then let's kick this off, shall we? If you're coming out of your way to say that somebody has said to you or a lot of people have said to you to stop you from going into certain communities that they prefer the good old days when you could be racist to people then yeah you're correct that they are definitely racist and maybe that is definitely a way of stopping you from getting into the communities but if you're adding the racist on to people that say that they wish that it was the good old days where you didn't have the PC culture and being able to walk in different areas, so on and so forth, not worry about the health and safety aspects, then that's completely different to your perception of them being racist. See how the different perceptions are. Because you think people have a system of being a certain way when people say oh, i wish things are the way they were be less pc less health and safety you automatically perceive them to be a case of being racist towards you and not the way that the health and safety pc culture actually is but again if you actually have people coming up to you and saying that they prefer it the old way where they could be racist and then doing forms of caricatures about you then sure, then they're definitely being racist and you should report them for being racist. Look, I get it. There are some people that are going to be racist and try to exclude you for being a certain colour. I understand that. But please don't try and confuse or conflict that when people are talking about PC culture, that they're talking about racial issues. They are actually two different issues and a lot of older people have a higher degree of agitation towards PC culture and health and safety and stopping them from being able to do something the way that they used to do it. And it's not necessarily always about race. And it's that sense of being excluded because of racist attitudes. So I have a burning question, and it's as simple as this. Why are there so few black people in the countryside? Depending on your age, your parents, grandparents, 
faced a lot of hostility when they first came to the UK and the idea of going off into a more remote area uh, was intimidating. So older generations would say to younger generations, you know, don't go, it's not safe. And the intention was to protect, um, you know, it's not for us. I want people to be able to hear this again. So I'm going to play that again for you. But she actually comes out and says that the reason why people have this prejudice towards this area it's because of their parents, their grandparents, or their great-grandparents, depending on how old you are, that is actually instilling these forms of prejudice that they've had prior into the new generations. So I really think that this is interesting and the reasons why people should actually watch these types of things, because it does give you an insight into how people actually think. And it's really interesting. So let's actually watch that again. So I have a burning question, and it's as simple as this. Why are there so few black people in the countryside? Depending on your age, your parents, grandparents faced a lot of hostility when they first came to the UK. And the idea of going off into a more remote area uh, was intimidating. So older generations would say to younger generations, you know, don't go, it's not safe. And the intention was to protect, um, you know, it's not for us. But I find that very interesting that the prejudice themselves that comes from thinking that the countryside is uh, racist actually stems from their own parents or grandparents rather than it actually being a lived experience in most cases. Because there, there was fear about what might be encountered in more rural settings. So over time a, a generational disconnect occurs. And within black culture there's quite a strong narrative around nature being backwards or dirty or why do you want to do that or that's a white thing to do. But this is a culture that comes from the pain of feeling separate from the natural world. The most recent figures for England alone show that a quarter of black and Asian people are likely to visit the countryside each week, compared to almost half of the white population. Meanwhile, just 1.7% of England's black population actually live in rural areas, and 2% of the Asian population. Elsewhere, 1.3% of Wales' rural population identifies as BAME. In Scotland, that figure is just 1%. And in Northern Ireland, it's 0.7%. So the statistics of people of deciding whether or not to go into the countryside is a stark one, to be honest with you. I think that it should at least be on par. Now, that doesn't mean I'm talking about equity. It just means I think that more people should go into the goddamn forests and frolic and be happy. I think a lot of people would be less angry if they frolicked more. But all joking aside, if you're going to start bringing up statistics about where people live and so on and so forth, then shouldn't you bring up the actual demographics of the actual whole countries that you're actually encompassing, rather than just trying to make it look and see that they're being excluded? Though I don't actually think that you were doing it on this way, I do actually think people would interpret it as such because of the way that people perceive the BBC. I actually think that you were doing it as a point of interest, of pointing out the stark differences. That a lot of time people's choices are where they decide to live, or in actual fact, social economical decisions are limited by your status and economic wealth. But again, that's people's decisions and choices. In this review commissioned by DEFRA of the National Parks last September, it called for new long-term programs to increase black and minority ethnic visitors to the countryside. Well, that was nine months ago, and I want to know what's happened since. So I'm going to skip the whole section of the review because it's actually focusing on visitors to these areas, heritage sites, so on and so forth. So I don't feel there is anything that I need to cover because I completely and utterly agree with it. I do think that more people from all communities should be enticed or encouraged to go and visit the countryside and these heritage sites. I think everybody should know where they come from, where they are, and enjoy the history of our great nation. Now, with that being said, if anybody wants to watch the full video, the link for that is down below if you think I'm cutting anything out or missing anything important. Moving on. So what might the future hold? 
Maya Rose, known as Bird Girl, is an 18-year-old naturalist, birder and climate activist from Somerset's Chew Valley. She's one of Country Files' young naturalists, sharing her passion for wildlife and the countryside. I'm half Bangladeshi and I started to realise that there was a massive lack of diversity in the environmental sector and just within the groups of people who were enjoying nature. Maya Rose started her Black to Nature campaign in 2016 to give young people from minority ethnic backgrounds the chance to reconnect with nature. So this is a roundabout, the last section of around about a 12 minute section of a whole 55 minute episode that everybody is screaming and shouting about at how bad country file were for talking about enticing BAM community people into local areas and into heritage sites and into the countryside in general and why everybody's losing their minds over how this is apparently the most race baiting stuff that the BBC's ever done. Personally, I don't see where the race baiting actually is. Sure, there's a couple of virtue signaling and I, I get that and the psychotherapist has her own prejudice and threw that in there rather than necessarily explaining where the racism comes from. But also did a really great example of showing where that prejudice actually comes from and preconceptions come from in the BAME community, which is from their parents, their grandparents, their great grandparents, from their own heritage, their own word of mouth of how bad these areas are supposed to be. And it's the fear of those areas that are leading them not into going into it. So I think just watching this episode in itself, this 12 minute section in this 55 minute episode, actually shows you a hell of a lot more about the preconceptions and the prejudice that have been passed down in life by communities based on fear and interpretation of said fear more so than there actually being racism in the countryside and i find it ludicrous i really do find it ludicrous that these people that are supposed to be about racial equalities don't even take the time to actually watch these types of videos and realize that these conversations are actually about getting people into and enjoying the countryside. Every single thing so far that has been put forward in this episode, and this section of episode rather, has been about trying to encompass people to go into the countryside, not getting more and more people to move there, not more and more people to diverge and get rid of their racism, so to speak, or it's so racist that people shouldn't go. No, it's actually trying to get people to go into the countryside because it isn't racist anymore. I wish people would see that. So, my final thoughts on this are that you have a couple of virtue signally bits from Country File saying that they support Black Lives Matter, the movement and the idea in itself, which if you're supporting the idea in itself, I don't see where the problem is. You can have different conversations about the movement themselves or what the actual intentions of the movement are. And those are conversations that we definitely should have. And we should definitely have that as a equal nation, as in white people should be able to have a conversation about Black Lives Matter, the movement, as well as black people and people of colour in general in that movement should be able to have equal conversations without being called racist or prejudice or so on and so forth. So don't think that, that I'm trying to do this on a one-way instance. It's just something that I have noticed that when this community was to call out and say, look, it seems that this community doesn't go into the countryside, doesn't enjoy the countryside, doing the walking, doing the rambling, doing that and this and so on and so forth, or even moving out into the countryside and whatnot because of the preconceptions that the BAME community have about other aspects in the countryside as a whole, as it being a white or white-er environment, which doesn't mean that, oh, it's incompensated by white people. It's more of a case of them thinking that it's to do with the aspect of hiking or enjoying the outdoors is dirty, bad, or that's a white person thing more than it being, well, white people are there, so stay away. It, 
it really does interest me that people that want to talk about the idea of race, especially the really far right people that are really trying to push the idea of let's talk about race, seem to be the first times of people that scream and shout and are so adverse to actually talking about actual issues within certain communities that they come out and say that well, they're attacking white people. They're literally saying that the preconceptions of a community that isn't white shouldn't have these pre preconceptions of another community and should enjoy the community because it's more welcoming than what they think it is. So let's get some initiatives together to change the minds of the BAME community to go and enjoy the countryside. But, but, but somehow, ladies and gentlemen, somehow that that's that that's all against white people somehow I'll, I'll leave you with that because i don't really have anything else i can really add to that at this time please let me know what you think down below let me know if you think i'm way off base here and you can show me how one the tweet was attacking white people and second of all the video themselves how yeah, there's a couple of virtual signaling bits about it, and I understand that, and you can have your gripes. But they're not actually attacking white people in this segment. They're actually trying to encourage a community. Let me know down below if you think I'm way off base on this, or let me know if you think that I've got an actual point, and maybe it's a conversation that we should allow people to actually have, rather than letting our own fragility, I mean that wholeheartedly, and I really don't like using that word, but it does seem like that in this instance. I really do think that people are crying wolf when there is no wolf in this instance. But let me know. Am I crazy? Am I going over the top? Let me know. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching this. Give us a like. Give us a share. Subscribe if you think this was informative or I did a good job. If not, I'll try and get you next time. Come back again. See you again, ladies and gentlemen. Take care. Bye-bye for now.